you guys want to design your gremlin? Let's do it. All right, so I'm here at the FT STEM um, lesson area, and I'm going to go to the lesson where it says design your own gremlin. If you're a student, your teachers can assign that to you. Um, if you are a teacher, make sure you assign your students the design your own gremlin so that they can have all the resources to them. You can also go into the resources tab, and under your CAD default, you can also get um, the uh, CAD files for the gremlin as well. So, after viewing the design your own gremlin, I'm going to be doing the 2D version here. So, underneath the 2D CAD version, you guys are going to be able to design um, your gremlin either to use using a laser cutter or a CNC router. Um, or by hand by like a scroll saw. Um, in any case, you're going to need these 2D drawings so you can get the plans. So I went ahead and downloaded it already, and here's what it looks like. And it's it's a lot to, to look at at first, but let's just kind of break it down and see what we got. We've got a kind of a template in here to show you what the prop size is. It's around a 2.3 inch prop. Um, and these are always good to grab and copy and to move over your drawing to make sure that you're not hitting anything. Um, it's kind of like your guide. So as you can see here, this is the uh, Gremlin that was designed by TJ. Um, and you can see that he's got his uh, props in here um, and is not touching anything. And, you know, this is the way he designed it, is that you're going to see a little bit of a prop uh, in the camera. And you can, you know, most definitely use that and go with that. Or you can try something different um, and make it so that it's kind of like a T formation up front with the slight... Uh, swept back with the arms and to get the props out of the way of the camera. So whatever your preference is, um, go ahead and do that. Uh, also, these are the standoff holes. This is a good size for standoff holes. Most standoffs around the, um, you know, the 20, 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter size will work fine. Uh, you can make your own, actually your own standoffs and they'll be just just fine. Um, we've also got this hole placement here. These are kind of important because if you want your wires to shoot towards the center of your quad, uh, this is the hole placement that you're going to need. So what I did was, um, this formation here is a perfect X, and that is the same formation that TJ used on his Gremlin. So if you look at this here, you'll have these three lines that are kind of pointing. That's kind of like your direction as to where the wires will point. Um, so anytime you take this and you throw it over your quad, you're going to want to make sure that you rotate it. As you can see, it might have been rotated um, so that that blue line faces this way. And since then, since I've already cut this out, I went ahead and deleted those lines so they weren't in there. So all you simply do is just copy these holes here and drag them over uh, to your quad design, and you'll be set to go. So you got your front left, front right, front left. you got your back left and your back right. Um, and if you move over here, this purple circular circle represents the dimension of your quad. In this case, TJ's quad is roughly 110 millimeter in size, so you can categorize it as 110 millimeter. The blue line indicates this is where the center of gravity will be of your quad when you design it, and you pretty much take it from the center of each uh, motor, and wherever it crisscrosses, that is where your control board is, is going to want to be. Um, and that is where you're going to have your center of gravity or center of balance of your quad. Now, for uh, TJ's, he's got his uh, perfect X, which is going to give him probably the mo the uh, uh, some high agility. He's going to be able to do a, a really quick roll and flip rate with it. Um, whereas this one might be a little sluggish in the rolls because the center of gravity is far swept back. So if I was to come in here and grab this and drag it down. Uh, just be you know in between these, you're gonna see that um, my center of gravity is just slightly going towards the back, which might alter a little bit, um, which is actually a really good kind of testing scenario too to see, you know, the effects of center of gravity on your quad. And, and so when I go to build this particular quad, I'm gonna to want to make sure that I put that control board right in here. Now, for this quad that I designed so that you guys can use, um, I threw in the uh, FT symbol in here so that you guys can, if you want to, if you have lasers, you can set this at a different power rate, and you can put it somewhere in there so that it only burns just a little bit into your wood to give you that effect, um, and it you know, makes for a pretty cool looking quad. So, designing your own quad, what does it take? It's, it's almost whatever you feel like you, you want to do. And 
you know, the first thing that you're going to want to do probably is just to do a little bit of research. You know, if you do uh, racing quadcopter, you know, you're going to get you're going to get some pretty cool stuff. And what frame, what style of frame do you want to emulate? See, here's kind of like the one that I emulated for mine. So you got the the T up front, and then you got the swept back arms. You can do kind of like a QAV style, which is kind of like what Zavada did for his. Um, where you have, you know, this style where the X's are going in, or the arms are going in towards the middle. You can do some standard X's. You can do, you know, just straight up H quad. There's a lot of options that you can do. Um, but in any case, I'm just going to do a simple uh, uh, quad design just to kind of get us going here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this TJ Gremlin. So I'm going to go Control C and Control V and just copy it. I'm going to bring it over here and just put it in my working plane. I'm going to leave all this the way it is because I'm going to need to copy and paste from that um, as I move forward. So TJ's Gremlin is perfect in size. If I was to draw a rectangle by just hitting REC Enter and just draw a rectangle over his quad or a square, I know now that whatever quad that I make needs to probably stay within that size. If I want to start to experiment and kind of, you know, venture off and make these arms longer, I can. It just depends on what kind of material you have and um, the strength of material too. The longer you get, the structural integrity of your quad is going to get a little weak. So we want to make sure that we stay within those confines. All right, so I'm going to delete TJ Gremlin here. So here's his top plate. Um, what I want to do is I want to make a straight H quad and I want to know how to do that. So if I just take this section here, click it, pick the center of that and I type in RO enter, turn off my ortho here. I can now move my arm how I want to move it. And I want to move it so that the arm, if it was here, I'm going to move it to where it's just straight. Okay, and I'm not even going to mess with this side over here. I'm going to leave this just the way it is. And I'm going to do the same thing on here. RO enter, click the center, and I'm going to make this right smack dab in the center like that. Making sure that I you know, take those holes in there too, and I know for a fact that if I do this, those wires are going to be pointing right towards the middle. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this line, and I'm just going to shoot it straight up to about, uh, we can just go straight up. Let's do ortho. And then I'll come off his things here. And if you guys are wondering what these are, these are like uh, little holder, like placeholders for like, let's say like a strap or a rubber band um, that, that, we, that they typically use to strap down their ba uh, battery. I'm gonna trim this by typing in trim, enter, picking what I don't want. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And I'm going to keep the center point here. I'm going to make sure I mark that off just for reference. And I'm going to mirror this. So I'm going to delete all of this right here. And delete all of it. Complete my line back here. Come here. And I'm going to hit M, Enter, and just move my top plate out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in mirror. Enter, and I'm going to pick everything on this side of the frame, right click, and drag it down here, click, enter, and now I've got myself an H-quad design that I can now test. Now it might look silly, let's say if I copied this, let me delete this, let's see, if I copied this, see how enter, move it over, and I want to copy this too, and I want to copy it from that point, move it over to my circle, you can see it might look kind of funny if I was sitting like that, but before I move forward, I want to make sure that my props are not hitting anything, so come over here and I click this, and I'm going to copy this again. CO enter and just pick my center. And believe it or not, 
it looks like I'm going to be okay. Now remember, your your hole is, or your top plate is going to be below this prop, or it could be above the prop, so you'll be fine. Camera will rest right in here, which we're going to get a lot of front plates, which is probably not going to be the best. So well, you know what, I'm not really liking this, because think about it, if our camera's back here, and all this place is up here, this is, it's going to be in the view of our camera. So, I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to stretch this thing out. I'm going to pick all this, and I'm going to move it out. Whoa. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. And I'm going to move, let's see, move, let's move it this way. Oh, nice, there we go. And I'm going to delete these. All right, and I want to, I want to make sure that this can go up towards the front. So if I'm going to move this over here, I want to probably move it like around right here. So I'm going to turn off my ortho. Okay, what does it look like if I move over here? All I'm doing is I'm just kind of try, trial and error in here. About right there. That's where I want it to be. So I'm going to take this piece, I'm just going to drag it over here. There's the extra line in there, TJ. Okay, and then I'm going to keep, I'm going to move actually these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror, I'm going to mirror this, turn my ortho on so I get a nice mirror over, and I'm going to copy this. Oh yeah, I got a lot of room. Let's move this back. Move it back to about right. There. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I'll take this piece here. Move back in here. And we'll mirror this guy. Front arm here. Over there. I'm going to copy. And what I'm doing, I'm just trying to just play around with the sizes here, play around with the frame. And I know that my receiver is probably a lot bigger than what they use, so it'd be nice to have a little bit more plate on here. I'm going to take all this, and I'm going to move it. Move it back. Probably move it all the way to the back. That'd be kind of cool. Move it all the way back. Close it there, bring this, close it there, and then I'll make another set of copy holes, and I'll put it down there. Whoa, that's looking pretty cool. Maybe I can mount the battery on top. That'll actually work. All right, so I'm going to mirror this now. Mirror all this over. Maybe we do something cool here. Maybe I come up to like here. Maybe we do something like this. Ooh, I'm liking it. So I delete this. Don't need that anymore. So now I've got my H quad looking pretty good. Now, something to think about when you go to build yours is to think about the structural integrity of some of the stress parts and not, you know, for leaving stuff like this could leave for a stress point. So I'm going to say fill it, enter, I'm going to change my radius to 0.5, enter, and I'm going to put a radius of 0.5 in here and see what that looks like. I think we have to delete this line. Bring it back. Fill it, radius 0.5. All right, so I'm going to click here, click here. Mm, that might be too much. Let's go back again. Maybe let's go 0.25. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. 
So I'll delete this. Make a line to here. Fillet radius. I'm good. Put there. Come back. And to delete this guy. And the reason why I'm doing that is for some reason the CAD file that I have is not letting me do it with the original line type, which is no problem. Let's make a new line. F enter for fill it. Put it there, and I'm going to take this guy, connect it to him. And there you go. Wow, that looks cool. Now, before I'm ready to prep this, I'm going to delete my circles. I'm going to copy my quad over. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the outside quad. Getting rid of any double lines I might have. Okay. And remember this one goes all the way across. Whoa. Getting rid of this guy, that's part of the top plate. Okay, and if you want to keep him there, you can. If not, this is the bottom, so I'm just going to take him out. Alright, so now this side, I'm going to do the complete opposite. I'm going to get rid of all the bottom part of the quad. Because we do not need him anymore. And all I'm doing to delete is just, um, oops, I do need that. There we go, I don't need this. All I'm doing is I'm selecting it and hitting delete on my keypad. All right. Now, now I am ready to print this, put this on either a, uh, put this in line for a laser cut. Uh, put this in line for uh, just printing it out on a piece of paper so I can put it on wood and trace it and then cut it out by hand um, or using a CNC router to, to move on from the step. And however your guys' setup is, that's what you're going to want to use. Um, but I hope this helps you out. A lot of it's just playing around, getting used to CAD and coming up with some really cool ideas um, for your gremlin. And uh, as always, make sure you guys share them and post them and hashtag flight test gremlin or something so that we can get keep an eye out for it. And uh, don't, uh, don't be shy and share your Gremlin designs with others so that, you know, the kids and other hobbies can grab a hold of your drawings and, and just keep on growing from there and, and, uh, and celebrating the, the design of the FT Gremlin. Hope you guys enjoy this, and I'll catch you next time.